Well, in this week's Cardiology Countdown, we'll start at the number three spot with a look at the incidence and prognosis of resistant hypertension. This is a uh, case of the highest risk patients, and the incidence hasn't been clear. And so out of two health plans with long-term follow-up, they determined uh, that about 1.5% of people over a 1.5-year uh, observation period developed resistant hypertension, so about 1 out of 50 uh, patients, roughly. And their prognosis over the subsequent four years was about 50% worse in terms of developing cardiovascular events. It makes complete sense, uh, but gives us some hard numbers as to just how common this is and its consequences, supporting the idea that we need to find better treatments for those high-risk resistant hypertensive patients. At the number two spot is an interesting study looking at um, use of echo uh, speckle strain uh, imaging to determine dyssynchrony and whether that could help in targeting um, lead placement uh, for uh, cardiac resynchronization therapy. So this was the target study uh, published in JAK this week um, that randomized 220 patients and did the um, two-dimensional radial strain imaging um, using speckle tracking and found that using that to determine where to place the lead, um, that they were able to get a significantly better echo and clinical response rate. And so the clinical response was 83% in the targeted group versus 65% um, in the standard of care group. And so this raises the possibility that this could be a new way to target uh, and getting better responses. And then at the number one spot, we have uh, an interesting biomarker atrial fibrillation study where they looked at patients with atrial fibrillation at the risk of stroke and death using the traditional CHADS and uh, CHADS-VASC uh, scores but added biomarkers. And the two leading ones are always troponin and NT-proBNP. Each of them uh, was a predictor of stroke with a hazard ratio of a little bit around two and of mortality with hazard ratio about five-fold higher incidence of death if you had positive biomarkers in outpatients with AFib. Um, and so these could be added to the traditional uh, clinical risk scores to further risk stratify the risk of both stroke and death in patients with atrial fibrillation. So a new look, really, at using biomarkers in a novel patient population. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.